Hello again, guys. Uh, it's um, it's uh, early morning in Ushuaia, freezing cold, um, and I'm just setting up a camera shot here. Just got it in fast motion. I just like the way the the mountains in the background, and well, it's pretty boring to watch actually. But uh, <laughs> okay, so while I was in Ushuaia, I had one pretty miserable day uh, with rain. And now, now I'm looking for my TG Tracker camera to set it up. Um, there we go. So I just get set up on a little hill and you'll see the shots later. And just set it on to, uh, to take a photo and then just go about my business. Um, so this is the road on the way to, basically they call it the end of the world, Terra del Fuego. Um, it's the end of Ruta 3. Um, And it's quite a nice little ride actually. Uh, dirt road all the way uh, to the end of Route 3, which is sort of like, you know, it's uh, basically at the, the last major road in South America, at the end of the last major road. There's quite a bit of tourists down there. Uh, locals uh, uh, locals have to pay like a, like a really small fee, but they actually asked me to get off my bike and I had to go inside and I had to pay like twenty dollars to ride twenty kilometres, 10, ten miles, fifteen miles, something pretty ridiculous. But I suppose they know that everyone who wants to do it, so they know they can charge people to do it. I suppose um, there's some quite pretty areas you can camp there as well. I wish I had known because beautiful areas for camping uh, along some of the rivers and little little lakes. But. Uh, yeah, that would have been a nice way to finish off because that would have been my last time camping. Not that I camped a lot anyway. It's one thing I wish I could do because you'd save an absolute fortune by camping. Some people walking the route. Um, yeah, it's probably the biggest expense you'll have. Well, it will be the biggest expense you'll have um, if, if you don't camp because accommodation you know, accommodation through a lot of the places is really cheap and you're probably through some places in Central America and, and, um, and Mexico and South America for five dollars you can get like a hostel you know for the night um, I always went for the private rooms um, instead of the hostels only because um, still a little bit of water on the road in places as well and when, when it's really hard like this and you get a bit of water on it it gets pretty slippery um, Especially when it's just clay where there's no rock. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I, I stayed in private rooms. This is where you had to pay to get in. Um, there's a little booth up ahead. It was a really nice little ride. You know, it only took, only took about an hour, an hour of my time. But it's a nice ride nonetheless. Um, once you get to the end, you can go on a bit of a walk. Uh, but you know, more of the same. There's some little things on the right, some people camping on the right hand side there. Um, and then a little bit further up there's some more people camping. And then it opens right up in a really pretty area. It's sort of like a rite of passage. You, you finish the trip, and this is where you go to finish it off. Um, yeah, so I ended up spending two nights, uh, two extra nights, uh, so all up four nights in uh, Ushuaia before I had to make the 3,000 kilometer plus journey back to Buenos Aires. Um, and I wasn't really looking forward to that because. Um, if you know Argentina, basically every, from Ushuaia to, uh, to Buenos Aires, it's really flat and desert type um, environments, not till the last couple of three or four hundred kilometres that it actually gets pretty nice. Uh, a lot of farmland and stuff like that. But I, you know, I, I, you know when, you, when you do a trip like this, you sort of like have it in your head. You just got to get those days out of the way. 
uh, but this is a really nice little pretty area. There's some people camping around this, this area as well. Uh, this is using the TG tracker, as you can see, it's got a wide angle. So that's just sitting on the back of my, uh, on my back case um, and just pointing in. I should have, and this is a 360 camera, the Samsung 360. I've got some 360 videos as well of this, but unfortunately you can't edit, edit those videos into normal videos. That's a, that is a great camera. I suppose that when it's all said and done, you've just got to you've got to limit your cameras. Obviously, your GoPros. A lot of people will use the GoPro. I probably won't use a GoPro anymore. Um, I just they've just left a sour taste. You know, I bought basically four versions of it, and uh, you know, it's a little bit like the iPhone from years ago, where it just got incrementally better each time. It didn't get it didn't, there's never, not a real reason to buy it now. They're trying to make different reasons, uh, give, give you more reasons. So there's people camping up around here as well, on the left and on the right. Um, and then a lot of people basically uh, park their cars about two miles back and then walk, walk the last leg. But this is really pretty here. It's probably not captured so well on the video, but it's absolutely beautiful. Now these things here, you cross a lot of these bridges with that thing in the middle, some of them not as wide as that, and you've got to be really careful because some of the wooden planks, once they get mud on them and they're wet, they get slippery as all hell. Uh, sometimes it's not worth even putting a bike on there, uh, it's worth better off just putting it in the middle. But this is really pretty and this is some sort of, uh, some of the workers live, live in this place I think. Um, I got in trouble on the way back actually for speeding. I was only doing like 40, 40 kilometers an hour, but the guy told me to slow down. Uh, yeah. There is a lot, lot of uh, locals around there, but that was really pretty. And there's some more campers down on the right, up ahead there. But uh, yeah, it's really, uh, you know, uh, these few days, uh, I met with Johnny, the Italian, I met with him and we had some lunch and he was still having problems with his BMW from a few days ago that I discussed. Uh, and um, went to a couple of like local, one seafood place and then one steak place, they were really nice. Uh, everything's pretty expensive there though, you'll find, you'll find, especially during peak season, and you probably wouldn't want to travel there any, any uh, you wouldn't want to travel there in, um, in winter. Uh, pretty crappy. I'm going to go through the middle of this one. Um, yeah, so uh, you can camp there. You have to pay a fee at the at the toll booth. You've got to state how many days you're going to be camping, and you've got to uh, fill in a, a sign a form to say that you're not going to light fires and all this sort of stuff. This is the last little leg little leg in there. But uh, yeah, so the everything now is just basically, I had to organise um, my uh, stay in Buenos Aires, organise my plane trip back and organise my uh, bike to go back. And the smart money suggested that the smart move wasn't to book your flight before you got your bike. Uh, so basically what we did was uh, I booked my flight immediately after I'd actually booked my bike. So um, I'll talk about that process uh, on one of the, the last videos on how to get your bike back and who to speak to and uh, uh, who to contact, all that sort of stuff. Um, but it, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, but uh, these guys make it a lot easier. Um, and you're not allowed, to, you're only allowed to put the, on the bike, you're only allowed to have the tools. Uh, um, you're not supposed to have your riding gear, but they didn't check that. I, I was spewing because I could have put my, one of my batteries in there, which wasn't allowed to go back. I had to spend $300 to send this big battery back, which is an anchor powerhouse. Which is a pain in the ass. I should have put it on the in the bike. They 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 uh, take they weigh your bike, and as long as it's I think you know you pay by weight um, and volume, obviously. Um, but it cost cost me about um, two thousand about eighteen hundred dollars to send the bike back. Um, 
which if you've only got a cheap bike, you wouldn't mind it. So here's this is the end of the road here. And you'll, you'll probably notice this sign from uh, or photos and other people's videos. And the sign basically tells you a little bit about this park and how far it is to bonus areas and how and what what degree here. There's a sign up there on the right. I've got a couple of photos here anyway. I ended up riding my bike right up there. Get some photos. There's a lot of, everyone takes photos of it so I have to wait until people had, uh, had actually uh, got off I uh, got out of the way. But here's some photos from the ride back. That's the, the 3,079 kilometres. 17,000 to, to uh, Alaska. So yeah, um, there you go, that's the uh, end of the, the road into Ushuaia, so that's la my last day in uh, Ushuaia before I head back. I think I stayed actually one more night after this actually. Um, but yeah, as, as always, questions and comments below guys. Thank you very much.